All right, welcome to part two of the series. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about functions and variables. To get started, I'm just going to show you what we have set up. I have a part that is anchored in workspace here on my base plate, and there is a script inside of it. First thing we're going to talk about is variables. Variables is a name that can hold a value. So for example, I'm going to type local, which is just declaring our variable, and then your variable name. And I'm just going to put my variable. And that is going to be equal to a value. My variable is going to represent whatever value we want. And values can be numbers, strings, booleans, and a whole bunch of other things. So for example, we're going to do my variable one and we're going to make it a number. It can be 15 or it can be 1.0235. It can be whatever you want as long as it's a number. It, it works, I guess. Um, then our second variable, my variable two equals, we're going to do a string, which a string is just text. So to type a string, you're going to do quotation marks like this and then type whatever you want. Then for our third one, we're going to do a boolean, which is essentially true or false, like I said in the previous episode, and we're just going to set it to true. This is a very simple concept to understand, and once you practice with your scripting, you're going to come across tons of more different variables you can create. Like, for example, like I said in the previous um, tutorial, we were talking about different properties such as position using vector3. You can store a vector3 as well in a variable. So if I type my vector, we can do vector3.new and there is our vector3 position. And like I said in the previous tutorial, when you set the position of a part, you have to use a vector. So instead of typing the entire vector out, what we could do is type script.parent, remembering that the parent of the script is our part. Script.parent.position, we're changing the position property, is equal to my vector, which represents a vector3 value. So instead of typing this, we'll just do it by the variable. And if we go ahead and test, our part should change places. There it is floating all right that is simply variables variables are very easy to grasp but that moves us on to our next topic which is functions functions are sets of instructions that can be used multiple times in a script or I guess you could say it's like a, a block of code that you can run over and over again by just calling the name of the function. So to declare a function, we're going to type local function and then the name of your function. And here is our function. As you can see, there's a little arrow here. This is new to the script editor, I think. I'm pretty sure, but it'll allow you to open and close functions if you ever need to do so. But what we can do in this is like we just did, we can set the position of our part and we can set a vector three. I'm going to use the same position I used, but if we go and run this script, nothing's going to happen. As you can see, our part is still in the same position. And the reason for that is that this function is declared and we've written what the function will do, but we haven't called it. And essentially to run a function, you basically can copy this and type it again. Or you can just type it out. You type the name of your function, it'll show you this here. And then you put your parentheses and that'll call the function when the script runs. There you go. Now the script has run and this part is now in its location. You might be wondering what's the point of using a function? Essentially, it just helps you with larger pieces of code. This line right here is very simple and this is a very simple function. So it wouldn't be an issue if we copied it and kept doing it, I guess, if we needed to for some reason. But if we had other things such as 
changing the brick color like we did in the previous episode color dot new bright orange if we had multiple things all we had to do was just call this function instead of typing each of these every single time but then again that doesn't make any sense because in this script or in this function we're just changing the part and if we change it once we don't need to change it again but that's where parameters come in function parameters go in between these parentheses here so we can type out a name for a parameter such as part and what part is going to do is it's going to represent what part we pick this does not matter some functions or events which we'll learn about in a future episode will have pre set parameters that you have to put in or you can put in but for just a regular function you can add as many parameters as you want and they'll have whatever name you want so to set what this part represents because this is essentially a variable so let's just to make this easier i'll put my part this will represent my part but to set this variable when we call the function inside the parentheses here we have to declare what this parameter represents so what we're going to do is type script dot parent and then instead of doing script dot parent here we'll do my part like this if we go ahead and run let me check the output position is not a valid member of workspace Oh, so I forgot to remove that position or that parent. So it was doing the parent of part, which is workspace. That is how you debug your script as well. There we go. Now our part is orange and it's floating in the middle of the world. All right. Next, we have returning values. Returning values is very easy, I guess. It's a, a little more difficult to understand, I would say but it is very useful when you need to get information back. So, so for our function, let's say we wanted to figure out the position of a part. So let's say position check, that'll be our function name. And we can get rid of these actually. Then inside of here, we're going to put a part parameter and then we're gonna do local position we're making a variable is going to represent part dot position and then what we want to do is use the return event to return our variable and what that will do is when we call our function we're going to call it in a variable so that the variable will represent the position so to do that we're going to type local result equals position check script dot parent so we're calling this function and making sure our parameter represents our part it'll check the position and then it'll return the position and if we use the print event um, and print the result it'll print out our position so result will represent this for some reason, if your part did not have a position or you were doing something else and it was not a property, you would get an error and this would be nil and it would just print nil. So if we go ahead and play, it'll show you this is the position. Let me check. Yep, that is the position. You can control scroll to zoom in if you'd like. There you go. The print event, the print event is very helpful when you're trying to debug your script so for example if i did workspace which represents our game dot workspace or you can type workspace with a lowercase w to access workspace directly or just game dot workspace works fine as well so if we do game dot workspace opposition which is not a thing and we press run we will get an error saying position is not a valid member of workspace all right 
that is all that you got it guys gotta know for today's episode i hope you guys are learning very well and understanding if you're still having a hard time i really recommend you go to the comments and post um what you're having trouble with um other people or myself will reply and will help you out um, I do have a Discord, which you can join and also, also ask for help. The link will be in the description if you need it. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoy the series. I'm having so much fun making it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and definitely consider subscribing. I see you guys in the next episode.